Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Professional Perspectives with Vicky and Anita. And today we have a special guest, Denthil, who I'm going to introduce as first my previous boss from <laughs> the Hyderabad Consulate, um, but um, more more specifically, he is the public engagement specialist, and we'll find out what that entails today uh, when we talk to him. Uh, but he handles all kinds of programs, and especially the English language program, which I was a part of as a fellow from 2019, then virtual in 2020 and 2021, and then in person in 2022. So um, his responsibilities, I think, have changed a little bit. We'll find out about those. But uh, he is married and has a daughter. Uh, he has a master's degree from Pondicherry University and a, a bachelor's also. So we'll find out about his road to success. And um, I believe that it's now been over 10 years that he's been with the council because while I was there, he celebrated his 10 years. So uh, Central, welcome. We are uh, really happy to have you with us today. And I'm going to uh, spotlight you um, for any of you who are new to our program. Uh, Anita and I will be interviewing uh, Sentel, kind of like a fireside chat. And then the last 20 minutes or so, we will open it up uh, to, the, to the audience to ask their questions. So if you have a question, please jot it down or put it in the chat and we will uh, get to it uh, after our initial interview. I just need to make one little mention to my students who are in my English for Employability class. Please remember to put your name and roll number in the chat and you'll, um, you'll actually get credit for being in this um, interview today. So welcome everyone. And uh, I'm going to spotlight Sentel and welcome uh, Sentel. Uh, so uh, I'm going to start this interview because I actually do want to ask you the first question is, what does a public engagement specialist do? And, um, We'll ask you more about your road to this position, but uh, could you tell us a little bit about uh, like your job description, if you would, wouldn't mind, Sentel, thank you. Sure, uh, Vicky, before that, a uh, very warm um, good evening to everyone. Um, a few known faces, uh, but I, I will get to know a few others in the due course of time. Uh, but um, so um, thank you so much, Vicky and Anita, for this opportunity to share my uh, life story and my uh, you know experience with you all and with your students. Uh, I always uh, enjoy and like sharing my experience and my life journey with uh, youngsters. So. Um, thanks again for another opportunity. So uh, let me answer your first question. Uh, public engagement specialist. I think, you know, half the answer is already there. Uh, I am one of the uh, staff who's been hired by the U.S. government to engage the public in this part of the region. Uh, so at the U.S. consulate in Hyderabad, uh, we work for three states. We work in three states. That's Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, and Odisha. And uh, we have quite a lot of programs and activities through which we engage the public here uh, in, in order to kind of uh, deliver U.S. government messages or explain U.S. government's policies and stuff like that. So that's what uh, it entails when I say public engagement specialist. And um, yeah, I would, I would leave it over there. And it involves me organizing and programs activities, traveling and meeting new people, young people, uh, some established uh, contacts and young and upcoming contacts and uh, making new relationships, all that comes under this job purview. Did you always want to work for a foreign government? No. I'll be very honest with you. Uh, you know, today I'm going to actually share many things that will make uh, your students uh, realize how life is all about grabbing the opportunities that come your way, uh, rather than uh, rather than you know uh, saying, "Oh, this is what I wanted to," and uh, if I failed, I'm not going to uh, you know be happy about it. So, no, I have. I would say I have landed here, though I did not 
uh, you know, aim to be here. But my career kind of led me to places where I have always liked and enjoyed working. And that's the most important thing that I would say. Wow, that's great. Wonderful. Uh, we'd actually like to hear more. So what is it that uh, the hurdles that came? How did you really start off? And how did the channel continue? Sure. So Anita, what happened was, uh, you know, I, um, you know, many students uh, over here would uh, understand when I say this, because this is, I, I believe, you know, uh, almost 50 to 60 percentage of the students, those who don't go for hard science career, like, you know, want to, to become a doctor or an engineer, the rest, you know, many of them have this ambition of wanting to become a civil servant. You know, I wanted to be an, an Indian administrative service officer or some of the government of India services. And it's a kind of a very reputable thing to uh, be uh, in those services. So my dad coming from a government uh, background, uh, he was a, a veteran uh, in US government language, but for uh, others, uh, he was an ex army, ex Indian Air Force person. And so he always wanted me to be in, uh, uh, become an uh, IAS officer, a, a government of India officer. Uh -huh. And uh -huh. I also had a passion uh, for a lot of general knowledge in those days growing up, you know, I used to read newspapers voraciously. And uh, my dad used to tell me there used to be a time when I used to miss homework, and will be found reading a newspaper or a, a comic or a book uh, in a quiet corner of my house and my my best experience is one day my dad caught me reading a newspaper under the pillow when i was you know he thought i was <laughs> sleeping or something and then so but anyway so he thought okay this guy has a lot of uh, passion for general knowledge and those days to become an IAS, i mean to become a civil servant or something you have to pass some of these competitive exams and most of these exams are all about questions on uh, India, world, general knowledge, general current affairs and stuff like that. So that's what it is. But um, and so I, I was um, so till about I'll, I'll tell you, there is very interesting thing that I wanted to quickly mention uh, before I focus on the other aspect. Um, till about 12th standard, my class 12, um, everybody in my family were like the peer pressure was that I have to be a, either a a doctor or an engineer and my cousins uh, were all you know already going towards uh, studying in us and some are going to uh, be preparing for their medical exams the entrance exams etc and class 11 i have shifted a school from class 10 to class 11 and i am somebody who hated maths i'll be very honest with you <laughs> we all do so, i don't yes i don't I think have, you're the only course. one here <laughs> we <hate> absolutely <laughs> we all so do. <laughs> uh, those days my first exam in class 11 i scored uh, um, 17 marks out of 200 that's <laughs> 8 marks for 100 <laughs> everybody in the school and in the uh, you know my friend circle my family were all shell shocked i mean come on you can fail <laughs> but eight months that's, that's ridiculous <laughs> and then that's when my dad realized okay probably i should ease some pressure off him and he came he sat with me and said you know what i realized that okay you probably don't like science you don't probably like maths um it's too late for uh, us to pull you back from the school uh, here is a promise that i'll make somehow if you are able to complete these two years and uh, make it uh, um, work uh, we can consider looking at a, a subject of your choice and i still remember on the day when my class uh, 12 board uh, 12th board exam results were coming uh, you know peer pressure my dad was patting me on my shoulder while i was driving him to drop him at his office saying that the results will come today whichever may be the result we are there behind you the family always supports you so don't be you know and i used to think why is he saying all these things because i remember <laughs> i mean there were many instances of people not being able to handle uh, failure and so naturally but then that chapter ended and, and when it came for my uh, uh, bachelor's degree i chose history and um, and I, I i didn't look back uh, i was a topper in my bachelor's and i was a 
topper in my masters and i'm a university gold medalist and i also went on to be invited as uh, one of the you know prime minister's guests to be uh, to witness the republic day parade in uh, delhi and so that's my biggest uh, uh, moment of pride for me and my family and my dad and my dad came to accept the fact that okay even arts or english or history can also you yes. know make uh, <laughs> career yeah. yes you know i want to uh i want to go back to that uh thing about uh, peer pressure but also family pressure because i have a lot of students who say i want to make my family proud and so they want to do what their parent wants them to do could you touch on that just a little bit more um obviously even if they tried to do what their parents wanted them to do and they were successful well how, how do you how do you think they should handle that pressure well two things uh, i'll mention uh, wiki here i am also one of those uh, students who like your students uh, i had such a big fear to go and even talk to my dad uh, on those days and i used to be scared and and then i i also see around many students who, who are uh, scared to talk to their parents or especially their father about what their career choices are or what they want to study etc so two things i will say uh, one um, i want you to uh, demonstrate to your parents that you are actually making some effort in that in the field of their you know interest then you fail go have a conversation with your parents look you saw me it's not that i did not try i tried my level best but it didn't work out and i don't think this is in me for me to you know continue in this field and also the other thing as uh, uh, you know as a student as a uh, uh, children to your parents it's also i somehow feel that your responsibility to do expose your parents to the diverse careers you know bring in people oh yeah take them, take them to places take them to places where you know go watch a seminar with your parent you know there is a program going on that why don't you come over there and when they come when they see many young people and their parents also coming they start to think that hmm okay looks like like even this is a kind of a respected field or there are also people earning money here see at the end the parents want the best for their children but when they see that there is hope there is a future uh, for their children in the career that they are talking about or uh, different careers other than the one that they thought my thought is they will come around to support you yes uh, that that's a re- that's really uh, good I I I guess I never really even thought of that to explore because I always tell them there are so many new jobs and job titles and job positions these days uh and yeah, yeah so they need to explore Anita Yes in fact I was I would like to add here that the other thing that uh, students can do is bring their parents over to professional perspectives because that's another yeah, place definitely. where uh, we are <laughs> Yes <laughs> Yes, yeah. anyone is welcome to come here and we'd have all different kinds of uh jobs and, yeah. and advice and yes, a good point. Um can you I I don't know that if there is a a typical day for you, Sentinel, but um can you explain a little bit uh, more like specifically like what a typical day would look like or a typical week? I know it involves traveling and different things, but we would love to hear a little bit more details of what you do. <clears throat> sure so um it's it's uh, i would say it's a very um pleasant and enjoyable work environment that i enjoy uh, partly f- for two reasons i have colleagues and uh, uh, a system that respects uh, the staff and respects the work that you do uh, not always but i would say most of the time uh, so that's one thing that i would say uh, my typical day is like you know i um, many of uh, uh, indian students probably don't understand this but uh, i follow the american standard in the sense i start my day at 8 o'clock in the office i am at office by 7:50 7:55 in the morning and i start my day at 8 o'clock my uh, other reason being is um, the other 
colleagues come around by around 8:30 8:45 so i get that good chunk of 30 to 45 minutes of peaceful time where i get done a lot of things uh, clearing of emails and stuff like that so that's uh, uh, something that i have always followed and uh, many a times though i am i can leave by around 4:30 but uh, work keeps me busy and sometimes because the way i enjoy my work and uh, you know talking to people talking to colleagues sometimes i get calls which make me to walk out of my uh, building to the uh, open air uh, because uh, we work in a very uh, 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 building which has not much space so i can't be loudly speaking over phone so usually whenever a call comes we go out to talk and then come back etc so part of my day also is lost in answering these calls and you know stuff etc so i tend to also kind of go beyond my usual office hours to complete my work and again that's not a bad thing in my view because i am doing uh, i've done my work and it still gives me pleasure and uh, so that's it and weekday yeah sometimes uh, um it's it's hectic like for example this week and next week are kind of hectic for me because we have a short week as it is and there's a holiday in between and next week i'm traveling and this week i have two programs in fact some students from st joseph uh, college are coming to hyderabad for their program uh, access programs uh, intensive program visit so i'm kind of busy setting up meetings for uh, them uh, so that people can come and talk to them etc so some weeks are um, hectic uh, if you ask me to characterize it my most part almost about 60% of my week in year in a year is always kind of busy but then there is always that 40% which is always fun you know you are pulling somebody's leg you are playing you are mm. uh, you know you are probably even watching some video or mm. you're doing some goofy thing with your More colleagues relaxed. or something like that no yeah. relax yes. Yes. Exactly. yes do you get both american and indian holidays off yes indeed so oh, i get about 20 lucky. days uh, holiday yeah lucky sendil yes yes indeed uh, it's uh, it's like uh, 10 days of american holidays and 10 days of indian holidays the best of both the worlds huh? <laughs> yeah but you know we are all human beings right we don't actually choose the actual holiday but rather choose holidays which comes closer to the weekend right choose a friday or a tuesday monday so that you get three days of holiday right. so that's what we try to do with regard to indian holidays long weekend yes yeah. long weekend yeah great anita i know she anita by the way is a psychologist and so her questions are going to make you think <laughs> yes i'm <laughs> ready bring it in bring it on uh, i was thinking of it from the perspective of students uh, when a student wants to get into a field that you are in um the path that you mentioned was that you uh, studied uh, up to uh, masters and then after that what so how do how do children or students embark on their career what are the steps they need to take um it's a very good question anita so i would say uh, from my experience i'll try to answer this is what i have always two things i would uh, mention students one like i think i mentioned it at the beginning uh, also i'll repeat it here um, always have a plan b uh, one uh, most importantly your plan a will work surely 70 to 80 percentage but if it doesn't work you, you shouldn't think that oh my god what have i done i have come this far and i don't know i can't go back but choose a you know career that probably comes along your way and these days especially at this point of time in 2023 i will mention this very very importantly uh, we are living in a multinational world you know call it globalization careers have become a mixed one you know you see a doctor working in a management uh, position a management person managing a hospital uh, different yes. things and uh, somebody going to be uh, you know uh, be a scientist but then there is someone else who comes and sits on top of them as a ceo and then there is data the data 
has opened the world into multiple job options etc and so my advice and this is something i keep always telling to youngsters is always this that please be flexible and please be open to ideas that come your way you never know where your break is you know mm-hmm. i had many break one break was when i uh, switched from science to arts uh, in my class uh, sorry bachelors and then i was literally going towards uh, the career of becoming an ias officer suddenly i remember i went for a friend's wedding and then i went back uh, to spend a couple of days at my university where i did my uh, masters and they said why don't you enroll into a research degree and then continue to you know pursue your civil services exam but then that took over that's another turn so i forgot my civil services path and i went towards academics i started i got so fascinated in academics i wanted to become a faculty then then i went on towards that oh. path for a very long time and then reached a stage where i was like started feeling pressure that i am depending on my dad for my uh, you know living and then i said okay i'm going to get a scholarship so i got a scholarship when the scholarship was coming to an end i said okay i'm going to take up a job and that time when i used to because of my passion in reading newspapers i thought okay maybe i i like newspapers maybe i have a i can do something writing some little bit of things and earn some money to support my studies so i went on to join a newspaper as a reporter and boy that was very very uh, um, uh, soul satisfying i did all kinds of stories wow because i'm not from a traditional journalism background so i got all kinds of story options i was sent to some science conferences to cover i was sent to cover some tourism events and i was asked to interview people and i also ri- wrote what we call it as a you know a human interest stories you know you see somebody somebody's story you want them to be you know help so by publishing their story you may be able to do that so that gave me a lot of passion on those days and i thought okay fine that's uh, that's i started then that took a turn again i forgot my academics path and i went <laughs> towards this side we and always have came about turning another point you have a lot of turning points <laughs> i have a lot which is where when i look at your question i'm like hmm, my life was always on turning yeah. points so yeah so sindhi so may i admit what i was yes yes please go on please go on. please may i intervene a little i know very impolite sure, but uh, <laughs> i have to do it right now while sendil was on his uh, journalism stint or his newspaper stint he also oh, yes. <laughs> happened to be a colleague of my daughter oh uh, so yes. <laughs> he knows my daughter very well and in fact i asked yes. her to join the program but she said she has to go to work at 6:30 in the morning and uh, asked me if i could uh, send a recorded version of this yes we'll we'll i'll send it to you <laughs> definitely i'll send it to you but i can't yeah. miss sendil's program but i this, i cannot this is you. this is your daughter who's in new jersey yes yes okay yes. yeah i'll send you the link yes we were calling we were calling oh. she was writing for a newspaper yes. i was writing for a different newspaper right oh. you know it's supposed to be rival newspapers but we always <laughs> had best very of friends, good yes. one and uh, <laughs> yes, and best because, of friends uh, yes, we all always share story ideas yes, don't tell exactly. anyone there is something <laughs> happening i'm going there you maybe you want to come we go both cover and then we write the same story on the same day so that it gets yeah. published like okay both of them don't get caught at the same time both of them are happy that a good yes. story has been published right. so yeah uh, that's, well, that's let's let's I'm hear sure about the turning point from the friend. journalism yeah <clears throat> <clears throat> tell us about the turning point after journalism so the journalism i took um uh in about 3 years i was very happy that included also a uh, not so pleasant uh, uh, uh an incident that i covered that we had a uh, the bomb blast in hyderabad um uh, where in which um, you know i was the only one person in the office when that had actually happened and my boss who walked into the office he is he heard that there is a, a breaking news and there is the bomb blast in hyderabad it's at a, a mosque and he looked around he looked around he looked at me i am standing right in front of him but he knew that this guy is new young and he he doesn't have a journalism background and he looked around and then he realized okay there is no one else to task he said okay he said something very for the journalism he's a senior journalist for almost 30 40 years so he in a very plain tone said there's a bomb blast in uh, makkah masjid um uh, 
please go there uh, start covering i will send more people over there uh, just go there start uh, watching what's happening start taking notes and keep me uh, posted on phone mm. and for a second i i didn't know what i was doing you know but then you know th- that incident again is another incident that uh, um, left a strong impact on me because i'm going towards the blast site you can imagine my mental condition because yes. everybody is running away from the fight and i'm the only one who is going towards yes. that side yes. and for a second i thought am i doing the right thing should i just disobey my boss and say that no no i'm not going there i'm going home <laughs> or i'm not going to go there but i did i did go there i covered that so it was a satisfying 3 three, three and a half years uh, i did very good um, uh, reports i did a lot of stories um, and also did an exclusive also which helped my university save some space from you know being sold to a private party so there are some good moments in that and then i was getting married then the the, the peer pressure that was uh, from the family was back on me and they said you know you can't have a career which is like working 12 13 in the night in on sunday somebody is getting married to you you need to have a more stable career because i was a bachelor i was on sunday night duty <laughs> no one else was willing to take that so i was the only one who was the they said you know you will do the thing and then my family was not very happy so i switched us slightly um uh, um <coughs> what call a tone down journalism career of going and working for a, a, a english magazine uh, it's called you and i it was a, a page 3 magazine if anyone would understand what a page 3 magazine mean mm-hmm. and so that's a huge shift from a hardcore journalism field <coughs> to a page 3 journalism at uh, this thing but i i i picked it up for two reasons one there was good pay number one and uh, double than what i was getting in the newspaper field wow. and so i was very happy that okay this is a huge jump for me um that's one secondly i still managed to wrote only those news part of the uh, page 3 magazine because i did not know any of those fashion or style or you know all those kind of things etc and all but my bosses were looking for somebody who had this news background and so i kind of fit into their uh, her role and so that was another two years Uh, so that's uh, the other turn that took i worked there and then as vicky mentioned 2010 the consulate was set up in uh, in hyderabad and uh, in 2009 the consulate started functioning and in 2010 a close friend of mine and a, a colleague of mine said you know there is a job here in the consulate um i feel it, it will suit you uh, it's kind of you know knowing people having passion to do things around etc and all would you be interested i said why not uh, so and then he told me that this is a job that reports to me so if you feel you are not comfortable you know working under me then you know you can skip it i said how does it matter whether we are they're all colleagues and you know how does it matter if i am reporting to you or you are going to be surprising me i said that's fine i i went ahead and it's been 13 years um come april uh, i'll complete 13 years so, yeah wow. that's the last turning point i would say that's that's a wonder so i'm trying to summarize three characteristics about you that you you seem to think are really important flexibility would be one absolutely and i and i hear you saying you know enthusiasm for dif- different topics um i'm not what, what do you think would be the third one central or anita what do you think is that he's saying is most important these days for careers um look at opportunities that come and go ahead with them not stop so taking risk taking absolutely risk taking so yeah. do you have any regrets along the way not really thankfully nothing that i have regretted anything uh, it's always been as i said you know this is where uh, wiki i i keep you know when i was looking at the questions that you sent to me i was looking at it i don't have any regrets frankly speaking because i had a very broad canvas and i said i'm going to take see i i had a, a civil service career in mind and i know i even today if i you know i always tell my colleagues also the same thing if the us government tomorrow decides to fire me and say that we don't need you anymore i'm happy to go back and work in a start a career in a school because i know that i can be of very very big use to children young children especially and want to even this career options that you know in my 13 years of my working with the us government itself i've got to know 
like what you're doing personal perspectives there are plenty of careers that i can talk to youngsters about you know be it data be it uh, artificial intelligence be it uh, pharma be it uh, cyber security computers politics and think tanks even you know some of these careers that never existed uh, when we were growing up you know think tanks who would have thought a government can have a think tank and you know people who are very good with the writing and reading research articles can draft the policies and help the government nobody would have thought but that's what uh, many of these uh, you know private consultancies uh, are doing and earning a big bug by drafting policies and drafting you know things for governments so yeah and uh, lastly the projects many a days these days you know everybody is putting out projects you know be it a mm-hmm. private company or a government organization you need people to write projects to apply for projects to execute those projects so you know people who are coming from like us i i would say my young friends who are listening to me here you have a academic background where you know how to take notes you know how to summarize you can use the knowledge that you got from your teachers in a better format so that's all is all about executing a project and uh, this thing in the worst day of your life where you feel there is nothing you can always go pick up a project work in a project get your money do what you need to do and most importantly like entrepreneurship a project is what you want to do at your home i mean you can always read at home write those reports give that uh, thing and do some field work at a time that you feel comfortable okay in a year like okay i am not very summer person choose the winter months to do your field work and come back sit shut yourself at to home on during those summer months and do the project so yeah yeah and anita yeah so in fact uh, listening to your turning points i feel you are all set to write a book on them literally <laughs> and you have the skills <laughs> as well <laughs> he even has the I writing wish. skills i wish precisely <laughs> i wish um i can help you there not you i can be the reminder <laughs> the one who <laughs> she's our pro- she's our project mentor when somebody comes to the language center and they have an idea anita tries to coach them through it to develop that idea yeah yeah yes oh, um, that's a good idea i will consider it anita definitely <laughs> talk yes, to yes. us a little bit about you your family and your work life balance that that sort of thing because you do have now and you actually change careers because of your family so how's it going for you now and how do you balance your time for your family and your work and your and your interest sure, sure. <clears throat> you know one uh, one thing that i've always uh, mentioned um my first part of my uh, life family has been like a, a scary thing for me you know i come from a joint family where there were many uh, you know elders who were like oh you haven't done your homework or you know i have to answer three people for homework one homework like okay somebody will come my dad will come at around 8:30 or 9 o'clock in the night but my uh, his brother comes at around 5:30 have you done your homework yes yes i am doing and then yeah. at 6:30 7 o'clock my uncle comes and asks the same question have you completed it no no i am about to complete and then by the time my dad comes back i am like okay it's done it's done actually so <laughs> so that way my early part of career was like more like they were deciding uh, you know things for me and they were mm-hmm. the one who were pretty much controlling me but like what i said to uh, vicky in at one uh, at one point when you had that uh, uh, you know when you make make your family feel proud even if it is for the first time in one or the other thing and that's when your family starts giving you that rope for you to play around okay you know this guy knows and you know he's 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 making us proud he's doing things and then they it's always like oh we will support you and my dad that way when i chose to go to pondicherry for my ma and then from pondicherry to hyderabad for my mphil and then when i said i'm going to join research and when i said i'm going to choose uh, i'm going to work for this newspaper and when i shifted this career it's always been like okay you know it better think multiple times take the call go ahead and do it 
and always were behind the same father who used to question me a number of times before that so the, which is I, i i kind of understood now i have become a father now i understand that you know uh, slightly better that your parents are actually more invested in your success and so the fear of you failing is kind of making them to you know pull you back pull you back the moment it's also on in you know i would say it's up to you how you mold your you groom your parents that you know you know things that what you are doing you know what you are getting into that's when your parents will start giving you that kind of uh, this thing so i would say later part of my life my career my family has always uh, stood behind me and my wife my daughter and my dad all three live with me here in this uh, uh, in hyderabad and they are always you know very happy and that you know when i go to places when i get to meet people i come home i narrate the story whether it is uh, a matter of meeting say the star badminton player of india or meeting one of the high ranking officials of the state government here or something i come back and tell them and my daughter is always like oh wow and then she keeps once in a while saying that i want to be like that when i grow up and i'm like yeah first complete your english and complete your other problems other things etc and all then you can certainly uh, you know become one so yeah i i, I would say my family has been a big big support to me uh, especially my wife my daughter and my dad and my extended family too uh, they have always stood behind me and this work demanded in the initial years uh, that i had to travel outside hyderabad my wife being somebody not uh, um, from this region and not knowing the language that is being spoken here and not so comfortable and confident with english language uh, things etc and all she kind of struggled but my dad kind of always there to say that you know i'm here don't worry if anything i can handle things outside things i will handle you can take care of the things inside the home etc so it's, it's always been a blessing uh, yes i would say that mm-hmm. well talk to us about the importance of language language communication uh, we are obviously the language center we believe in multiculturalism multilingualism uh, and um Uh, any advice that you have for students to improve their english and uh communication skills sure so um i would say language plays a very very important role in your career especially not just in your life but in your career options um a few things i would like to mention to my young friends here is that you know language always a good language uh, you know a good language skills or you know yeah. things always differentiate you from others you know in i i still remember very very uh, vividly that um, growing up when i started speaking english well my class teachers my other friends and they always always started appreciating you so now you may ask me what if i am not speaking the language as fluently as one would like to i am coming to that point and i learnt it by way of two things one my dad used to always use this proverb it's a tamil proverb uh, which means you know if you want to be a painter or an artist you need to keep drawing you know that's the only yeah. way you can become a, yeah. an artist and if you want to be uh, uh, you know uh, speak well you need to continue speaking yeah. if you are going to be shy of speaking because i am not speaking a good language or i am not speaking right then you're never going to pick up the language that uh, you want to so that kind of always helped me that i always went ahead even now i know that i may be making a 100 and you know one mistake and i'm speaking to you all but what made me go strong was that you know the confidence it gave me in language when i started acquiring many things and i also watched people it's not that everybody is you know born with that kind of a vocabulary some acquire vocabulary while you read books while you yeah. read newspapers etc and all and my career also helps me to watch people and learn you know i have watched people everybody around me i've always beat my faculties in my college days or university days or uh, other diplomats who were my colleagues uh, who came some are excellently uh, you know gifted with the language skills some are okay i would say some are you know had a heavy accent so i used to you know always admire when somebody is speaking with a heavy accent i used to wonder damn i am not able to follow this man so then two days three days later it becomes easy for me and i'm like oh okay this is what you you mean to for example you know i never got the word gotcha you know 
I'm like, what did he say? What got got here or got? Then, then I realized, okay, this is what they mean. This is like all colloquial, etc. So yeah, language is very important uh, as a student. And again, I will repeat this. Uh, I would say the most important thing is I would say language because in my life, language played a huge role in. you know succeeding in these turning points that are always come across uh, be it you know going to academics be it going to journalism career be it coming and landing a job with the us government here the language has always helped me uh, so uh, i would say keep um, practicing your language uh, it's okay it's okay if you are not comfortable speaking a fluent english but keep talking and uh, you know many it may look very cliched and uh, stereotype but i have always learned by watching people speak and uh, secondly i've also watched a lot of those english documentaries and conferences and seminars you go and attend again there may be a conference or a seminar may not be of your topic but you can always learn from people and try to learn as much as even the language you know i always say that okay many when i was a journalist when i used to go and attend those hardcore let's say uh, there is there is this conference called pharma pharma india i used to go there i'm always sent there to cover i have no idea why they sent me but i used to go there and they they are all speaking in those you know language that i don't understand and i try and strain to see i'm sure i will catch at least one word oh there you go okay that's what they are talking about oh okay okay growth the pharma ha ah. ah, ha okay that's how so again i would say language is always important and language always helps in your career and language also gives you flexibility to choose your career path that's the most mm. important thing that has worked yeah. for me uh, i would say please have that uh, option and i am 100% sure you will not be a failure all right anita one more yeah. question from you and then we'll open it to the audience uh actually there are plenty but uh, i'll restrict myself to one because i could just go on and on uh, you know uh, throwing reflective questions but um what is it aside of the language factor how would you guide because we know very well that there is a gap uh we call it generation gap a uh, gap between parents and children i'll use the word children here of course in a general sense of the word uh now with the gap and the careers that the children want to choose with the parents having you did mention that this is what uh, uh, students can do bring parents over but how is it that they can bridge that gap what do you think because you seem to have uh, super experience uh, with guiding from your parents and your yeah. family members it's true and likewise you doing that to your daughter so uh, what do you think would help the students in terms of uh creating a bridge using... between the generations hmm creating a bridge between generations you know i i sometimes uh, anita i i you know i have now new colleagues young colleagues uh, in my office um, so when i look at them and uh, sometimes when they uh mention things and when i mention uh, when they mention um say let's say a singer or an author whom i have never heard or the thing you feel a tad bit you're like okay uh, i don't know this person or i don't know what they are talking about but then i am sure what i in my what i have always done is i think this is uh, something many academicians also uh, do is that you drag people or the conversation to an area that you feel comfortable you know say giving an anecdotal example of you know what like this there is a actor here in tamil whom i know very well very familiar with whose by data or history or something that i'm so i always feel that the bridge can be that you know you use the language to bring the conversation to an area that you feel confident and comfortable and then try to make it work for you that is i would say as one point that you know um, that's the biggest bridge that i've always used uh, when i know uh, it's okay to not know everything uh, sometimes they speak about uh, singers um, i'm not a great uh, um, uh, i don't have that much knowledge about english uh, singers but that's okay i know one 
Brian Adams and then Jennifer Lopez. But then so you try to, you know, you sometimes you try to yeah. say that, okay, I know I've only heard about that singer. I've only heard about this singer. And then they say, oh, that's 1990s, my friend. They'll say, <laughs> I say yes, <laughs> that's okay. But I then try to bring it and say that, okay, you know, there is this genre that has got this kind of an information, this uh, available, etc. So the bridge part that you're talking about, if I understood very well, uh, is all about trying to bring people, trying to bring the conversation to the area and to a uh, topic that you feel comfortable. And once you reach that comfort zone, you have the person, whether it is your parent or whether it is your co-worker or other, you are having a comfort zone to have a conversation. And that's what I've always used. And uh, yeah, it has worked for me. So maybe maybe common ground. I, is that kind of what you're saying? Common ground. I mean, absolutely. Um, we absolutely. want the the, absolutely. the the young people to find common ground with their parents, and the parents to find common ground with their yeah. All right, absolutely. let's open. Absolutely. Let's 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 open it up to our uh, wonderful audience. We uh, you might have some questions. I have one last question, but I'll wait and see if there's time for it. So um, you may unmute and ask your question, or you can raise your hand. Whatever you're comfortable doing, if you have a question. Anyone have a question? Wow. Oh, Maybe I have not well, a good speaker, I guess. I don't know. Anyway, so I'm going to ask my question and then maybe it will spur some other questions. My question is, what is your dream or your goal or your vision for American Indian relations? Boy, that's a very, very tough question <laughs> to ask answer but here is what you know um, i may sound like a diplomat but uh, i will always say you know uh, if you have looked at uh, the two governments uh, terminologies and uh, uh, words that they have used in you know there used to be a time when india and us were friends and then we've reached partners level and then now you are like you know literally you're one and the same and uh, um, my uh, vision i would say is that both india and us has a huge uh, uh, potential to become two good leaders in the world and make it a more uh, peaceful world for everybody you know i wouldn't say uh, both countries uh, have their own problems I, I wouldn't call whether it is call it the political system or call it um, our uh, other problems uh, that may drag us down but that being said despite all our challenges that the two countries have the two countries have managed to keep up some of those you know major ideals that we call it as democracy human rights uh, fighting for uh, rights of other people um, you know climate change opportunities for young people etc and, and again not all uh, always not all in all corners of the country that one would say but overall i would say we've managed the two countries have managed to achieve uh, quite a lot of things and i would like us to see uh, this is my personal dream uh, is that the two countries us and india wanting to do well for the young generations of two countries you know create as many opportunities for that young generations because you don't know the potential that they have they have the potential to change the world they have potential to address some of the major challenges that the world is facing so us on one hand has got uh, uh, is endowed with good educational institutions and Indian youth can take advantage of it and you know the two can then create um, solutions for the world's problems be it climate change or democracy or human rights or uh, you know gender-based violence or trafficking in persons you, you name it you know we, we would be able to create some better solutions and better world for everybody yeah yeah, yeah. well there one one question did like come <laughs> That's okay. But one question uh, did come in the chat room. Um, uh, Vandana is saying how she feels pretty comfortable in talking uh, in English with her peers. But when she goes to talk to people in authority, 
uh, there's a, a big fear. And so she's wondering if you have anything to suggest to overcome this. No, Vandana, I would always say uh, it's it's always, you know, um, the moment you start thinking them that they are uh, figures of authority, then the fear starts settling in uh, uh, in your mind. I would always say that treat them as just like another stranger or another person to whom you are explaining yourself. You know, put yourself in that kind of a situation where, let's say, um, I've always cherished this uh, kind of an opportunity in the sense the whole classroom is kind of scared who's going to tell the principal that tomorrow we need a half a day, you know, we want to go somewhere or something. So I always like, okay, you know what, I'm going to do that. And trust me, it does not always work. Sometimes it has backfired also, but that's okay. What I have always done is you always go there, uh, start with some of those niceties. Uh, may I have your attention or can I talk to you for a minute? See, that's the whole thing. The English language has got it. You, you, you can like, you know, I think we talked about it just a while ago also. You make it soft first you make it pleasant and uh, you know if it needs that you need to prize the person uh whoever it is uh, whether it is your principal or your uh, you know teacher or something do that first and then ask your uh, you know put a put a you know request saying that you know can i have this or and uh, over the last few years i've learned this thing more uh, that is um, you know uh, have a conversation where in which you bring that person to me you know you have like a first you go on to multiple topics and then you come to the topic that you want i know you are beating around the bush but in the end what i have always uh, uh, done is that if i want a half a day leave it's okay for me to go and tell the principal that you are running the college very well the students seem to be happy the teachers are very happy we are enjoying this thing and my dad always likes to send me to the college and ma'am if you don't mind can i ask you something please don't think that i have come only for this demand but i honestly wanted to tell you this and then your demand is that okay can you please give us half a day yeah, uh, very diplomatic. Yes. Uh, yes, so no, then, very uh, diplomatic. We are we are talking to a true diplomat yeah, that's today. True. That's absolutely yeah. true. That's what uh, you yeah. Know, that's that's interaction that's is all. About. It has worked for me. Yes, it has worked for me. It has worked for me. And uh, Vandana, I would say the same thing. Please don't always think that, you know, uh, oh, my God, he or she is going to, you know, one first. This is a private conversation. You're going into somebody's room and talking to somebody, or maybe even if it is, let's say it's your principal or it's the, uh, you know, the bank manager that you're encountering, uh, you know, you went there to ask for a student loan and then they said, go talk to the manager and the manager is like, seem to be in a bad mood. And, uh, you know, please uh, have that time and to have a conversation and say that, you know, can you give me two minutes of your time? I'll be very brief and I wanted to tell you something and then, you lay out your pitch. You say that, okay, these are the things that we youngsters, we have a lot of ideas. We want to go and study. I come from a very poor background and I'm given an opportunity. I would definitely excel in my life. So yes. here I am. I have an opportunity to study in the US. I have a admission letter, but I'm here to get some loan. Your staff are saying they can't give me. Is it possible? You know, I'll be eternally grateful. That's it. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Even if you're talking all these things in a broken English, that's okay. And that's let's say, let's assume that conversation didn't go well. Let's say that I'm sorry, I'm not going. Uh, this bank is not meant for you. Please get lost. Go away. That's okay. Move. Yes. Go to another bank. Go to another bank. Go to another bank. And uh, I'm sure the fifth bank will work out or the sixth or the seventh will, will, will work out. What in, in these days I've noticed our youngsters do is they go to somebody, they from their first experience or that one experience, they get chickened out and they say, okay, this is not for me. I'm not going to be successful or something. I would always say, please continue, please pushing. And again, when I went for my first interview, uh, my, um, you know, after my graduation, uh, sorry, after my plus two, I, I told you I've shifted uh, from sciences to uh, history. There was a faculty, I mean, a principal of a college interviewed me. He's an English faculty, head of the department of an English. He was very impressed by then of, you know, of at that point of time, whatever English I was speaking. So he said, 
I'm more than happy to take you in my college. And you know what I did? I did the most stupidest thing. I told him that, I'm sorry, this is not my first choice. This is my second choice. I'm waiting for another college to give me admission. So I have come here to attend this interview just as a, a safety this thing. Boy, he lost it. Yeah, well, he would. He yelled at me. And he said, yes. Why are you wasting my time? If you were interested in studying in that college, you should have gone there. Why did you come here? But guess what? And then I felt silent. I realized what I did was stupid. I shouldn't have either done that or even if I had done, I shouldn't have told him. But then I realized, okay, I made a mistake. It's such a okay. I mean, then I was keeping quiet. And when I, when he looked at my face, uh, as I was leaving my room, he called me and said, you know what? I don't think I will be a good faculty if I do that. I'm, I'm sure wherever you go, you will excel well. All the very best, he said. And that, again, made a huge impact in me. And I said, you know what? This is what I'm going to practice. Even if I lose my temper over somebody, I may quickly reconcile myself and I will wish the person good luck. So that I have something I've learned and I've been following that. So it's okay, Vandana. Sometimes people will do, uh, may not appreciate, may not understand, may think that you are stupid or may think that you are very, you know, low in confidence, but keep trying. I would say that. Yes. Thanks for saying all that because in my English for employability group, we're just my class, we're just about to enter into interview skills. And so those things that you have said will come in very handy. And yes. um, so, okay. um, well, I, I just want to take this moment to ask everyone to turn on their video so we can get a picture of everyone for our uh, website and also for uh, a little souvenir for Central. And Central, we want to thank you with all our hearts for taking the time because I'm sure it's not easy to find the time when you're going to be available and all of that, but you did. And it was just such a delight. Thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Okay. Always a pleasure. So let, let me get a uh, thank few you. seconds here. Can you turn on your videos, everyone, please? Anita and I will take a picture. My students, Joycena, Daisy, Sreta. And if you're not my student, we still want your picture. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna count. Thank you, Daisy. All right, Nadia. Okay, I'll just count to three here so I don't keep everyone waiting. All right, one, two, three. One more time. Okay, one, two, three. Thank you again. Thank you, Central, for your time. Thank you, thank you Anita. Thank you, Nalini. Thank My you pleasure. to all who, who came today. Yes. Um, thank you all. I'm gonna I'm going to stop the recording, but